35, I expected most. I was only 16 years old. I was 15 years old. I was really excited. I had two dollars and a half in my pocket. I was young. I was 16 when I started. I was also well brought up. One day, uh, when school got out, it was the month of June in 1934, me and another guy caught our first train out. There was about 20 guys in the boxcar, and they had to help us up, because I couldn't even reach the floor. I ain't got a dime. I don't know what to do. At the height of the Great Depression, there were 250,000 teenagers living on the road in America. The country's economic collapse had destroyed everything in their young lives. Their fathers had lost their jobs, they'd been evicted from their homes. Even their schools went bankrupt and closed their doors. Like the millions of adults roaming the country between 1929 and 1941, thousands and thousands of boys and girls left home in search of a better life. Whether they were poverty-stricken kids or runaways, they crisscrossed the country by freight, following the harvest, begging at back doors, and growing up along the way. And now, Clyde, tell us about yourself. Well, I'm from South Dakota, and my home's in Rabbit City, a very small town, and uh, I've got a girlfriend there, and the reason I'm in this large city is because she turned me down because I didn't have a job to uh, show her good times. And she turned to someone that could. And now, Charlie, will you tell us uh, where you came from and how you got here and what your purpose was in coming? Well, I came from Louisville, Kentucky, came on a freight train and for adventure. For adventure? Most everybody that I know of that comes here is looking for a job. Well, I'm different. <laughs> You couldn't catch the freight train usually in the yard unless it was real late at night and you spotted where the bulls were, that's the railroad police. And if you knew that they weren't on your trail, you could catch one slowly as the train was moving out of the yard. But generally speaking, especially in the daylight, you'd have to go just outside the yard. Therefore, you'd have to catch the train on the run. Detectives, the railroad detectives, were patrolling with lanterns and a rifle up and down the tracks. But when that train started, when it, you know, it always jerks loose. And when it did that, this whole group of men just rose up like one person and rushed for that one door. <laughs> You're running along and trying to match your speed with the speed of the train. And you get a handhold here first and you swing yourself around. You're still running. You get two handholds in. is the first time you lift your foot. And I was the first one there. And somebody grabbed me with it nap of the neck and the seat of the pants and pitched me into that thing. It was a good feeling to be on one, really. That cluck, 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 cluck it, you hear the sounds as you go. And uh, that you know, the shaking of it, you know, and then that cluck sound, and the wheels hitting those joints. That's one of the things that I always think about. You know, you're gonna feel good just to hear that train. The whistle blow, feel good when you get on it, you know? Because you didn't have to walk. You're just going to get there, and you're going to try to better yourself. By the early 1930s, riding the rails became an epidemic, even though it was dangerous and illegal. In 1932, the Southern Pacific Railroad threw half a million transients off its boxcars, many of them teenagers. The public was outraged. In 1933, Warner Brothers produced the movie, Wild Boys of the Road, warning young people about the dangers of riding freights.
I think uh, Wild Boys of the Road, kids love that movie, you know. If you see a movie like that showing kids traveling on trains, well, that put the idea in your head, well, I could do that too. I wouldn't mind doing that. I'm not gonna get my leg cut off like that kid did in the movie. And uh, like they say, you ride a freight train one time and you're hooked, and I became an addict. I was just out there having fun. Nearly every letter of the thousands we received from former road kids stressed the unforeseen miseries of freight riding. I looked up to see the train enter a tunnel. The smoke overwhelmed me and I couldn't breathe. I panicked and crawled to the top of a boxcar. When I came to, the train had stopped at a water tank. I was violently sick, coughing up black coal smoke. I coughed it up for a year afterwards. Maurice Ayers. Above us came this detective with a club. He moved down the ladder and swung at us to knock us off. He missed, but we felt the swish of his club. Then we saw his foot come down a rung lower. He wouldn't miss at this range. It was either jump off or be knocked off. The train was going faster and faster. We jumped. Bernard Shuck. It's around midnight when our train pulled into the the big passenger station, uh, Ann Street Station in Parkersburg, West Virginia, and the train hadn't even stopped, and there was a gun and a flashlight in my face right up there in the blinds. And so the bull took us, told us to get down off there onto the, onto the platform, and he took us one in each arm and walked us down the station platform, and all these people getting on off the trains. And I just, I don't remember ever being so humiliated. This is at midnight. And in 10 minutes, why, we were behind bars. 